Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's broadcast, Active Packaging Reimagined, Novel Technologies to De-Risk Drug Product Stability. I'm Rita Peters, the Editorial Director of Pharmaceutical Technology, and I'll be the moderator for today's event. We're pleased to bring you this webcast presented by Pharmaceutical Technology and sponsored by Honeywell Aklar and Aptar CSP Technologies. I'd like to share some statements from our sponsors. Honeywell Aklar Barrier Technology has been the long-standing industry leader and trusted choice in pharmaceutical packaging for more than 40 years. Aklar, backed by the power and support of Honeywell, continues to set the global standard for high barrier thermoform film in the pharmaceutical industry. Highly regarded by analysts and investors, Honeywell is committed to build a smarter, safer, and more sustainable world. Aptar CSP Technologies, part of Aptar Group Inc., is a global material science company providing innovative, highly engineered active packaging solutions to protect sensitive products. The company is a leader in active packaging solutions, leveraging its patented three-phase active polymer technology to help ensure product stability, extend shelf life, and ultimately improve patient outcomes. I have a few important announcements before we begin. This webcast is designed to be interactive, and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found on the right-hand side of your screen. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the small square icon in the upper right-hand corner of the slide window, or you can hover your mouse over the lower right-hand corner and drag the window to the desired size. The slides will advance automatically during the event. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing the presentation, click on the question mark help widget in the dock at the bottom of your presentation window. Now I'd like to welcome today's speakers. Corey Anderson is the General Manager of Life Science Packaging, a line of business within the Advanced Materials Portfolio at Honeywell. In this role, she leads a global team driving the growth of the ACLAR portfolio in the pharmaceutical packaging market. Corey is developing breakthrough strategies to expand the breadth of the business most recently with the launch of Aklar Edge Bottles and Vials. She has a background in chemical engineering and business leadership with over 20 years experience in the pharmaceutical, oil and gas, and semiconductor industries. Thomas Dries is the global market development leader for the healthcare packaging business at Honeywell. He's responsible for driving end user engagement and awareness of Honeywell's Aklar brands via field marketing initiatives. Thomas is a physicist by education and has been involved for more than 25 years in the development and marketing of polymer-based packaging solutions for pharmaceuticals, food, and industrial applications. Francois Bide is Vice President of Business Development, EMEA at Aptar CSP Technologies. In this role, he focuses on developing a robust pipeline of opportunities to drive long-term business growth across all of the company's application fields. With more than 30 years of experience in the medical devices, biotech, and packaging industries, Francois brings a depth of expertise in business strategy and relationship building. Jim Hollinger's background is in mechanical engineering, and he's held numerous roles in quality and manufacturing in different industries throughout the course of his career. Over the past seven years, he's worked for Aptar CSP Technologies as the Active Film Business Unit Manager. His main focus at Aptar CSP Technologies has been to grow the active film and active blister business. So thank you all for being here today. Corey, I'm going to turn the presentation over to you. Thanks for the introduction, Rita. Today we'll talk about how Aptar CSP Technologies and Honeywell are joining forces to present blister packaging solutions that reduce the risk of moisture-induced degradation, especially for complex and demanding oral solid dose formulations. The essence of this solution is the combination of Honeywell's high moisture barrier Aquar films with Aptar CSP Technologies' moisture scavenging active film in a blister packaging format. We're glad that we have an opportunity to join together as we share our insights with you. 
Honeywell is a Fortune 100 company with annual sales over 35 billion U.S. dollars, serving many industries across the world. We're divided into four segments, aerospace, Honeywell building technologies, performance materials and technologies, and safety and productivity solutions. The Aquar Life Science business is part of the performance materials and technologies division. Our core mission at Honeywell is to invent technologies that address some of the world's most critical challenges around energy, safety, security, air travel, and life science. Our commercial solutions include a wide range of offerings, such as aircraft cockpit control systems, building environmental management systems, low global warming refrigerants, and N95 protective masks. Here you can see just how we impact the entire life sciences value chain. This visual shows that Honeywell is operating in a wide number of areas across the industry. We aid research sciences in creating test kits, therapies, and vaccines. We help customers as they develop next generation medical therapies and increase selectivity and capacity of existing technologies for new pharmaceutical applications. We assist pharmaceutical companies by supplying packaging products that enhance end-user compliance. We are one company, providing solutions across the critical steps of the life sciences value chain, starting with supporting research and extending across production, packaging, delivery, and all the way to the patient. I'd like to now turn it over to Francois Bidet of Aptar CSP. Thank you, Kari. Aptar CSP Technologies is part of the Aptar Group. The group is a $2.9 billion company recognized as a leader in drug dispensing and organized in three historical segments, beauty and home, food and beverages, and pharma. Aptar CSP is adding a fourth branch with material science, and we are supporting the three segments. In the group, we are more than 14,000 employees worldwide with manufacturing sites in 19 countries. For more than 75 years, Aptar has developed dispensing product references for each segment. Our core competence at Aptar CSP Technology is to be a materials science specialist delivering innovative, highly engineered, active packaging solutions. Our headquarter is located in Auburn, Alabama, in the U.S., and every year, CSP is shipping more than 1 billion components from its four manufacturing plants located in the U.S., France, and China. These products are supported by more than 500 worldwide patents. We are active in many areas like pharmaceuticals, medical devices, diagnostics, probiotics, or food safety. So, in this webinar, we will be talking about moisture, its impact on stability of oral solid doses, and how to minimize it. Pharma formulation people know how moisture could be detrimental to oral solid doses. The origin of moisture could come from three main sources. The initial water content present in the drug, the initial moisture present in the headspace of the blister, and also from the permeation through the packaging or the storage. This moisture has an impact on the oral solid doses as it will accelerate the degradation of the API. It will change its physical chemical properties and reduces the shelf life. Let's take a closer look at the main reasons for moisture sensitivity of oral solids. Approximately 40% of marketed drugs and even 90% of drugs in clinical trials are poorly water soluble. Poor water solubility limits bioavailability. Routes to increasing drug solubility are using less stable physical forms, such as crystalline, polymorphs, or even the amorphous form of the drug. Routes to increasing dissolution rate are based on particle size reduction technologies, including nanotechnology and surfactants for better wetting. Ironically, the efforts to increasing solubility and dissolution rate of poorly water-soluble drugs make these formulations more vulnerable to moisture. Why? Moisture triggers and accelerates physical changes of amorphous forms and crystalline polymorphs. Moisture has a huge potential to even plasticize amorphous phases. And the smaller the particle size, the bigger is the surface for moisture to bind. 
though what starts as a formulation with finely dispersed drug particles may undergo phase transitions with formation of aggregates during storage. Moisture has the potential to accelerate chemical degradation as well. Sometimes water molecules can even react with active pharmaceutical ingredients. Hydrolysis is not an uncommon reaction scene. The formation of hydrates or changes from a hydrate to an anhydrate are sometimes observed. Many formulations are complex and hygroscopic by design, for example, fast dissolved oral dispersible tablets. Aqueous wet granulation with subsequent drying are commonly used processes in tablet manufacturing. Quite often this implies a finite initial moisture content in the tablet prior to packaging. Last but not least, bringing a drug product to market in hot and humid or hot and very humid climatic zones with sufficiently long shelf life is another challenge. Corey? Aglar films demonstrate the highest moisture barrier per unit thickness of all purely polymer-based barrier films used in commercial blister packaging. Our Aclar films are available in a thickness range between 15 micron and 152 micron, or 0.6 to 6 mil. Aclar films are crystal clear, additive-free, and non-yellowing. They are made with Honeywell's proprietary PCTFE polymer technology, which enables predictable and consistent barrier properties during storage, even in hot and humid climatic zones. Last year, we launched a new family of Aclar films, Aclar Excel, to meet our customers' request for enhanced cost effectiveness and fast delivery. Let's briefly recap the benefits of thermoforming. Beyond just excellent moisture barrier, clear thermoformed Aclar blisters enable user confidence. A visual confirmation of the right medicine adds to preventing medication errors. Clear blisters ease tablet extraction. A good control of directed push-through forces is possible, unlike with opaque and oversized blister cavities made from alu, alu Blister footprints can be up to 62% smaller than blisters made from alu, alu This is shown on top of this slide where you can see real examples where brand owners performed a, performed a type 2 change from alu, alu to Aklar blisters. The actual footprint reduction percentages depend mainly on pill size. Smaller blister sizes translate in good portability and patient discretion during use. Packaging operation benefits from the smaller blister footprint as well. Up to 33% less machine hours are possible with associated capacity gains of 50%, sometimes even higher. Beyond savings in time, there are savings in warehousing space and shipping and volumes. Up to 66% savings in space are possible. This further translates in total weight reductions of up to 20% and up to 25% less energy consumed during manufacturing, warehousing, and outbound transportation. In summary, thermoforming has significant benefits for many stakeholders. Coming back to ACLA's outstanding moisture barrier, we have to note ACLA is a semi-permeable polymer. The graph shown here represents the flat film moisture vapor transmission rate, MVTR, of most ACLA grades for typical testing conditions. Obviously, the transmission rate gets significantly reduced with increased film thickness and depends on temperature and relative humidity. At constant temperature and RH, the MVTR should be inversely proportional to film thickness. Let's just pick the data set for the so-called accelerated testing condition, 40 degrees C and 75% RH, and plot the reciprocal of MVTR, 1 over MVTR. The result is shown here. The reciprocal of MVTR is a measure for the area of film needed to get one gram of water passed through the film per day. It is proportional to film thickness. Doubling the film thickness doubles the barrier. 
or in other words, reduces the MVTR by 50%. Tripling ACLA thickness reduces the barrier by 66%, and so on. It has to be noted, ACLA is not used as a monofilm for blister packs. It is too thin for blister applications. To give the blister more rigidity, it is laminated with other polymers as carrier, mostly with PVC. This is done by Honeywell's converter customers. In the meantime, many PVC-free ACLA laminates are available. Most laminates are just two-layer, ACLA plus carrier film. There are various sandwich structures available, including those with EVOH for enhanced oxygen barrier. As you all know, the thermoforming process creates a greater film surface and thins the laminate, generally not equally across the surface. Depending on the forming technology, a more or less homogeneous thickness of the blister cavity is created. The picture on the right side shows a microtome cut through a cross-section of a blister cavity for a size 1 capsule. In this example, the thermoforming process transforms an area of 193 square millimeter in a blister surface of approximately 452 square millimeter. The ratio of surface of the formed cavity and of the unformed base area prior to thermoforming is defined as draw ratio. To predict the shelf life of an oral solid dosage form, the MVTR of the formed cavity needs to be known. One option is to performing weight gain testing experiments by placing desiccant tablets made from a molecular sieve or silica gel in the blister and measure the weight gain of the blister over time. Another option is to calculate the MVTR. A simple method to calculating the MVTR of a formed cavity uses the assumption that the thickness of the ACLA layer after forming is inversely proportional to the surface formed and is homogeneously distributed over that surface. That is approximately an assumption, an idealization, but you arrive with this assumption at the formula shown on this slide. This formula states that the MVTR of the formed cavity is the product of the unformed base area, S base, the MVTR of the flat film in milligram per square millimeter and day, and the square of the draw ratio. Let's check whether this formula can predict measured test results correctly. Let's take first a look at the weight gain testing results obtained with size 1 capsule or 5 high gauge ACLA grades at the accelerated testing conditions 40 degrees C and 75% RH. The weight gain of the blisters filled with moisture-absorbing tablets is nicely linear with time. The MVTR of the cavity can be derived from the slopes of the straight lines. Although there is no need to measure 40 days as shown here, it takes a minimum of a week to get preliminary results using this method. For this experiment, black assist forming was used. And black assist is recommended by Honeywell for cavity depths greater or equal 5 mm. It results in a better thickness distribution of the blister surface than obtainable with pressure forming only. On this slide, you can see the direct comparison of experimental test results with calculated per cavity MVTR for the same size 1 capsule blister cavity for the four higher gauge ACLA grades shown. The parabolic curves on the left side represent the predicted MVTR as a function of draw ratio according to the formula mentioned. The dots on the parabolic lines represent the measured values for the actual blister shown. In addition, the comparison of experimental results with MVTR prediction is shown in the table on the right as well as in the bar diagram to the right. The key takeaway of this slide is deviations of measured MVTR with predictions using the formula are in the 5 to 13.5% range. And in conclusion, 
one may state the simplified blister cavity MBTR formula is a decent approximation of the per cavity MBTR of thermoformed ACLA blisters. The next slide shows an example what Honeywell offers pharma companies as part of the complementary rapid response services. When we receive your tablet drawing, our technology team translates this in a blister cavity design or uses your standard cavity design used at your packaging line. With this cavity design, we perform a barrier prediction of MVTR of any ACLA grade using a formula described. We also provide you with info how to maximize blister barrier. And we provide you with bespoke drawings for blister layouts, including 3D printed prototypes, including web layout drawings as shown on the right hand side of the slide. We further support our customers in performing shelf life predictions based on FreeThink Technologies proven ASAP Prime methodology. Our services don't end there. We help you to assess productivity gains using data specific to real packaging lines and help you performing detailed total cost calculations as a basis for business cases. I hand it over to Jim Hollinger. Thank you, Thomas. So far, we've been talking about the passive side of the packaging equation. And to be clear, the strength of the passive barrier either enables or kills the effectiveness of an active component. So with a strong ACLAR laminate barrier, the stage is set for a successful application of an active component. I'm going to discuss the active side of the packaging equation made possible by the Aptar CSP Technologies three-phase polymer technology. We create plastic that modifies the headspace of individual blisters by mixing at least three primary ingredients, a majority polymer, a minority polymer, and a particle. The majority polymer is normally hydrophobic and provides structure to the active film material. The minority polymer is normally hydrophilic and creates channels in the majority polymer because the two polymers are not immiscible in one another. Finally, we add a particle that has an affinity for the minority polymer and acts on the atmosphere we are trying to modify. So what you see in the simple diagram to the right is a representation of an extruder where we are melting and mixing the majority polymer, which is blue in the diagram, the minority polymer, which is yellow in the diagram, the particle, which is white in the diagram. The extruder mixes the ingredients and the active film material so that on the macro scale, the mixture appears homogeneous, but on the microscopic scale, the immiscible polymers actually stay in separate phases. The minority polymer with the particle forms channels in the majority polymer. This is illustrated in the diagram at the top right side of this slide. These channels allow all of the particles, even those that are deep in the polymer structure, to act on the headspace. The diagram makes it easier to understand how this works, but the scanning electron microscope image of the cross-section of our active film material at the lower right side of the slide shows the actual channels, even the particle. It's shown in orange. In the case of protecting a moisture-sensitive active pharmaceutical ingredient, the particle would be a desiccant, but by changing the polymers and the particle, we can modify the headspace in many different ways. For example, we can absorb or scavenge other gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, or formaldehyde. All of this can be achieved by changing the chemistry of the formulation. And the three-phase polymer technology is not limited to only removing molecules. We can release them also, things like aromas, biocides, nutrients, or carbon dioxide. Not only can we change the mechanisms of scavenging, adsorption, or release, we can change the rate at which these processes happen. Relative to moisture, the fastest moisture absorption will always be raw desiccant. But by manipulating the type and ratios of polymers, we can affect the kinetics of the system. The graph on the lower left side shows the control we have on the rate of moisture absorption. Normally, when I get to this point, someone will wonder, why would anyone ever want to slow down moisture absorption? 
And the irony is that most customers ultimately need much slower absorption than they originally believed. One reason one might want to slow down the absorption of moisture is to minimize the moisture capacity loss prior to being sealed in the package. Any moisture that's absorbed while the desiccant solution is sitting in the packaging environment waiting to be put into the package is capacity that is no longer available to protect your oral solid dose. So by slowing down the absorption, you're maximizing the moisture capacity available to prevent moisture degradation of the drug. You might ask, how fast does absorption need to be? And unless the oral solid dose has residual moisture that needs to be removed, the rate only needs to keep up with the ingress of the moisture into the headspace. So often, slower is better. Relative to oxygen, we pull down the rate by using more or less oxygen scavenging active fill material. However, unlike moisture, faster is always better. Another exciting aspect of the three-phase polymer technology is the many ways it can be processed to meet different needs. We have injection molded active polymer material, thermoformed it, extruded it, blow molded it, and even made hot melt out of it. We currently have commercialized injection molding and extruded film with our active polymer materials. Getting back to blister packaging, there are three main ways to deal with blister packaging moisture sensitive oral solid dose medications. Use of secondary barrier with a sachet or a canister, fishbone designed blisters, or passive cold form blister. Each of these solutions has drawbacks that active blister solutions addresses. The use of secondary packaging in combination with a desiccant adds material and size and processing steps to the packaging. Additionally, the packaging system is more complicated for the end user. Finally, the moisture protection only lasts until the outer packages is opened. After that, all the blisters are exposed to the moisture in the environment. The fishbone design adds material and size to the packaging and is more complicated for the end user also. Finally, if more than one oral solid dose is protected by one desiccant, the oral solid doses are not only not protected by the desiccant, but actually exposed to the ambient humidity once that first blister is opened. The cold form blister traps any residual moisture in the oral solid dose into the blister headspace. Active blister solutions is the only packaging solution that addresses all the sources of moisture and individually protects each oral solid dose until the time of use with the convenience and small footprint of a traditional thermoform blister. What if your oral solid dose has more than one degradation mechanism? The three-phase polymer technology has an answer for that also. We've already commercialized a combination active fill material that absorbs moisture and scavenges oxygen at the same time. And as long as the chemistries of the headspace modification mechanisms do not interfere with one another, all sorts of combinations are possible. So you may be wondering, how does that little piece of film get into the blister? Well, we have a short video that does a really good job of showing that concept. Using heat staking, the active blister solution can be added to pre-existing blister packaging without the cost and residual solvents of adhesives. That means you can improve the quality of your product while using existing packaging materials by integrating into your current or new manufacturing processes. Rolls of active blister fill allow for complete flexibility, meaning that no matter the size or shape of your product, active blister can be appropriately cut to suit your packaging needs. Then, just as your capsules or tablets are nestled into their thermoforms, your roll of foil unravels to meet the plastic. Right before the foil is mated to the thermoform, active blister is applied to the foil using heat stake. Then the foil, complete with newly applied active blister, seamlessly inlines. So, now you know how active blister solution works and is implemented into the blister. I'm going to pass this back to Francois to discuss a case study of the active blister solution. Thank you, Jim. We have run a case study in collaboration with the Precinct Technologies, 
which has developed the leading stability software package for determining shelf life under highly accelerated conditions, and PCI, a partner CMO in the US, which has implemented a film applicator on their blister line. So the idea was to compare cold form alu blister and various thermoform ACLAR blister, including the Aptar CSP active film. We have used a model tableted truck and the accelerated stability assessment program with the ASAP Prime software. In this study, we had four branches. Three branches are using the ACLAR Ultra RX 4000 film, one with molecular sieve active blister technology, one with the silica gel active blister technology, and one with the ACLAR Ultra RX 4000 alone. The fourth branch is composed of cold form foil blisters. We have also included two initial relative humidities to assess the impact of the initial moisture in the tablet. So the condition in this study were tested with several ACH conditions. 25 degrees 60% air rich with a low and a high water content, 30 degrees 65% air rich with a low water content, 30 degree and 75% air rich with a low water content. The related substances were quantified by HPLC. Data were collected after one month, three months, and six months of storage. At 25 degree and 60% residual humidity storage condition, it was observed that active blister is limiting the growth of the main degradient in tablets. This superiority was even more obvious if the initial water content of the tablet was at 60% relative humidity. After six months, the percentage of degradient was still below 0.5% with active blister, which is showing excellent results in the storage. This slide is representing the hot and humid condition, and the hot and very humid condition, like in ACH4 areas. Active blister with molecular sieve is more protective than other branches, including cold form blisters. The other prime software prediction of degradant growth within packaging agreed with the data generated from the stressed blister tablets. So, in conclusion of this case study, it was clearly demonstrated the advantage of a cloud thermoform combined with the active blister solution of a cold form foil. This advantage is even more obvious if the drug product has a high initial moisture content. Active blister packaging combines the practical advantages of thermoform blister with the moisture protection provided by desiccant for enabling a thermoform option for highly moisture sensitive drug products. In summary, there are quite a few drug products in development that need both active and passive barrier. We are talking mainly about those formulations that change their physical chemical properties to long-term storage through the impact of moisture and that are intrinsically wet, exhibiting a significant initial water content at time zero. This scenario is displayed on the upper right quadrant. If the formulation is initially dry or has a high intrinsic moisture sorption capacity, a passive moisture barrier might be sufficient. From the trials presented, we can conclude that active blister provides a stabilizing effect for all wet formulations or storage requirements in hot and humid climatic zones. Whether an active barrier combined with a proper passive barrier is required can be most easily determined by an ASAP experiment. FreeSync Technologies has demonstrated the capability to predict the impact of both active and passive barriers combined on shelf life. APTA, CSP, and Honeywell are happy to assist you overcoming your formulation challenges via active blister solutions. Clearly, the combination of Honeywell Aclar Passive Barrier and Active Polymer Technology in the active blister is a real added value for pharmaceutical companies. These companies can move from bottle packaging to blister packaging. They will avoid longer development and potential reformulation to withstand ECH4 conditions. 
by eliminating secondary packaging and extra process like nitrogen flushing. It will reduce the packaging complexity and the costs linked to it. By moving from cold foam to thermoform blister, it will increase the compliance and reduce the footprint, allowing a better sustainable option. And the most important, with the adoption of active blisters, combining the protection of aclar barrier film and active film absorbing moisture, it will enhance the shelf life of all solid doses. This slide concludes our presentation for today. Let's open the Q&A session now. Well, I'd like to thank our speakers for the informative presentation. Before we get started on the Q&A, just a quick reminder to our audience, you can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which is located on the right-hand side of the presentation window. Let's get to the first question. Uh, looks like uh, Aptar team, this is for you. Uh, could all the blister lines be retrofit to accommodate active blister technology? And what is the impact on production rate? Well, uh, this is uh, Jim Hollinger, and I would say that so far uh, we have uh, worked with a number of different manufacturers of blister lines, and we found that uh, th there's always seems to be a solution. Now, uh, the the way the uh, modules that would apply the active blister solution to the foil work, uh, they basically are taking the aluminum outside of the normal path uh, in the blistering line and uh, then applying the active blister to the foil in that deviation. So there has to be room on the line for that deviation, but uh, normally it's, it's only a matter of uh, having uh, the manufacturer of the uh, film applicator module to, uh, you know, review the construction of the, the blister line and, and work up a solution that works for that blister line. There are already uh, blister lines that exist, and so, obviously, if there was, uh, if that model was being evaluated, uh, then you know the solution already would be there, and and the concept it would exist. But so far, I would say uh, it's just a matter of reviewing the the line in question relative to rate. Um, this is also somewhat, uh, I would say, related to the the uh, solution that ultimately is is selected. Um, we have seen uh, blister rates. Uh, and I'll say individual blisters of, of 40 cavities at a time being punched with as many as 40 to 50 cycles per minute. So it, it, it doesn't have to be a slow solution. And again, this is one of these, uh, these situations where I would say that, uh, you know, given the challenge, the film applicator module would, could be manufactured in such a way to uh, go slower or faster. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, Honeywell team, I've got a question here for you. So PVC is a common component of laminate structures for thermoforming blister packs. Are there more environmentally friendly alternatives that you can recommend? Uh, this is Thomas speaking. Let me give it a try. I think the term environmentally friendly isn't clear defined. I must say the PVC manufacturers rightfully emphasize that PVC is recyclable and has a low carbon footprint and can be safely incinerated. However, there is a growing trend which we observe at Honeywell to look into alternatives to PVC, mainly polyester based. I can only advise uh, to contact our converter customers who provide that final laminate for further discussion on that aspect. Oh, thanks very much, Thomas. Uh, I think this one will be for Aptar. So, does the addition of a CSP strip into the blister cavity have an impact on the end user blister handling? That's an so I, I'll, is. Oh, go ahead, Francois, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Yes, so uh, at CSP and different pharma companies, we have run uh, several uh, human factor studies that have shown no impact on the patient medication and the ability to access to the capsules or tablets. And even in some cases, they found it 
easier to take the medication because it's giving more rigidity to the alu foil. Yeah, thank you. Jim, anything to add? No, Francois covered it just the way okay. I would have. Okay, great. Um, uh, looks like we got Honeywell. We're taking turns here. Um, it was mentioned that clear blisters ease extraction of tablets. Was there a study performed to add evidence to that statement? Uh, that's again, Thomas. Um, yes, there was an observational study performed at around 2015 by the University of Applied Sciences in Fulda, Germany. Uh, they made a field observational field study with elderly users and compared the satisfaction and measured the time to extract a tablet for two groups of elderly persons, as mentioned. So if you send us an email, we'll send you the reference. Uh, I recall the paper and can find it, look it up for you. All right, thank you very much. Um, all right, has Active Blister received market authorization? Jim or uh, Francois, you want to take that one? Uh, I will take this one. Uh, yes, uh, we've got uh, several pharma companies which have started to do studies, including clinical studies using the Active Blister with moisture absorbing material and also oxygen scavenging material. One major pharma company had an FDA approval for an oral solid dose HIV prevention medicine uh, last year, and it was uh, commercially launched uh, this year. All right, thank and you. we are expecting new authorization in the coming uh, months and years. Okay, very good. All right, next question. So how quick, uh, this is uh, Honeywell, how quickly can you turn around a blister design after you received our tablet? Uh, Thomas, again, uh, from the time you provide your tablet dimensions, we need typically five days. So that's what I remember. It can be sometimes shorter, sometimes a little bit longer, but typically five days. All right, thank you. All right, uh, next question. Is there a need to activate the active film or active blister at the manufacturing site? And if so, what is the way to activate it? Uh, this is uh, Jim. And uh, actually, uh, I would say so far of all the formulations that we have uh, to manipulate the headspace, uh, we do not have any formulations that require activation. Um, and, uh, and normally when people ask this question about activating, they're often uh, thinking about oxygen scavenging. Um, but the, we're really excited to be able to offer oxygen scavenging solutions that do not require activation at the customer's site. So the, the, that's the long answer. The short answer is no, there are no needs to, uh, to activate. The, the active blister material typically will come in a, a barrier, uh, like an aluminum bag, uh, and that is intended to uh, make sure that uh, anything the active blister material is supposed to be doing is, is uh, stopped until the bag is opened and then it's uh, put onto the packaging line. Okay, thanks, Jim. Maybe you can take this one too. So for oxygen-sensitive APIs, is active blister efficient? Well, that's a that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting question. Efficient, I, I would say, is, is somewhat subjective. Uh, we have had a number of customers that have used our material in uh, active blister formats for uh, oxygen sensitive APIs, and we've gotten some very good results. Uh, we have a number of customers that are very excited about the uh, the test results that they've gotten back with active blister. Although commercially in the active blister format, uh, we do not have anything that has launched yet. Okay, thank you. Let's see, um, all right, one more here. Um, where can I find a list of manufacturers of Aclar laminate? Uh, that's on our homepage, um, honeywell-acla.com. Also it works, acla.com. There is a section about us, and in that section, there must be a link labeled as a laminate network or laminate supplier network. 
So you should find it on our homepage, Honeywell-Agla.com. Okay, thank you. So if, if we use this, here's the next question. If we use this product with PVC, can we replace PVDC? So um, I'll go ahead and take that, and I'll say um, that PVC, uh, and, and this maybe I'll invite Honeywell uh, uh, to add into this, but PVC as a general rule, uh, the MVTR, the moisture vapor transmission rate, is, is not as good as uh, the barriers that we've discussed, uh, the ACLAR barriers, um, and consequently uh, severely limits the, the overall success of an active solution. So uh, we often will say that an active solution is only as successful as the barrier. So it's, a, it's kind of, a, it's a system, it's a combination of the two working together. If the, if the barrier is insufficient, then what generally happens is the active component is ultimately overwhelmed and you don't receive the re end result that you're really looking for. So generally speaking, I would say that uh, PVC alone would not be uh, a, a good barrier on it uh, to, for an active solution. Thanks, Jim. Uh, another question here. So how does Aclar film enable a smaller blister pack footprint versus an alu alu package? Um, I, t I take that, um, Thomas, again. Um, as I tried uh, to explain in the presentation, thermoformed blisters exhibit uh, very small blister cavities with a good tablet confinement. You know, the thermoform process is significantly, significantly different from the um, cold form process, which uh, forms essentially metal combined with other polymers. And uh, the cavities have to be more shallow and bigger uh, in order to avoid stress crack. This is the, the downside of this technology, but it has, you know, ultimately a very high barrier. That can't, that can't be argued, you know. But uh, the confinement of the, of the uh, tablet in the cavity is in the thermal form process much uh, yeah, much clearer, and uh, this ultimately results in a higher tablet density on the blister and a smaller uh, footprint overall. All right, thank you. Um, let, let's go to Aptar for this one. What about the use of nitrogen flush? Is there any negative positive impact of the use of a nitrogen flush during the blistering operation with the active blister technology? We have not specifically studied this. However, given that the way that the, the active blister solution is applied, um, it, it really should have no impact on, uh, you know, a nitrogen flush. I think um, a, a lot of times if we get this question from uh, customers that we're actively engaging for active blister uh, solutions, we will, you know, start to go down the path of asking whether or not the nitrogen flush is even needed. Uh, at that point, because with the active solution, we are we're often performing the role that the end customer is ultimately trying to achieve with the nitrogen flush. So um, I, I guess the straightforward answer is uh, I do not believe that there should be any negative impact on uh, the effectiveness of a nitrogen flush. I think the the exciting part of this would be whether or not you still even need to do the nitrogen flush. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Jim, and to all of our speakers for your presentations and for taking the audience questions. I'd like to thank the audience for attending and participating in today's event. And I'd like to thank our sponsors, Aptar CSP Technologies and Honeywell Aklar, for making today's webcast possible. I'd like to invite everyone in the audience to participate in a brief survey from our sponsor. And you can find that survey on the right side of your screen. You'll also receive an email alerting you when this webcast will be available for replay. I invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. So thank you again for joining us, and have a good day.